Hello, welcome to lecture number 37 of the course quantum mechanics and molecular spectroscopy. As I told you in the previous lecture that you know uh, we are going to look at some solved problems. So, today I am going to talk about the problems related to rotational spectroscopy. Okay. So, when you record a rotational spectrum, when you record a rotational spectrum you get you know numbers B you know things like that how do we interpret the spectrum and what you have to do to get the spectroscopy correct. One of the things that you do in the rotational spectroscopy record the rotational spectra of isotopomers. Okay, what do I mean? Okay. Now, if I have molecule HCl, okay. Now, there are various isotopes that I can think of. So, if I have HCl molecule then there are I can have 1 hydrogen 35 HCl Cl or I could have 1 hydrogen 37 Cl. So, 37 and 35 2 are isotopes of the uh, chlorine atom or one could have 2 hydrogen and 35 Cl. So, by the way this is also called D. Okay. D theorem is nothing but the isotope of hydrogen with 2 molecular uh, uh, atomic mass or you could have 2 hydrogen 37 Cl. Okay. One could look at various isotopes and you see when you look at the uh, rotational constant B or let us call it as B0 because at the equilibrium distance this is given by h by 8 pi square i where i is the rotational constant i is the moment of inertia sorry moment of and b naught is the rotational constants Now, how do you get met? P naught can be measured by experiment. So, when you record the rotational spectrum, we know that the separation between the lines, so this is 2b, 4b, 6b, this is 0 to 1, 1 to 2, j values, j is equal to 0 to j is equal to 1, j is equal to 1, j is equal to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, etc. And the separation between them is 2b. this is pure rotational spectrum. Okay. Now, when you have rotational constant B naught, so that you can 2B or 2B naught can be directly measured from the experiment. Okay. So, this is experiment. Okay. But generally, so this is B naught if you look at this uh, thing it will come out to be in hertz or uh, second inverse or hertz. The uh, in this case B naught is given the unit of B naught is second inverse or hertz. Okay. But generally B naught is not measured in uh, also measured in also measured in centimeter inverse. So, B naught is also measured in centimeter inverse. When I do, so you can quick do a quick conversion. So, if I measure B naught in centimeter inverse, then my B naught will now be equal to H pi 8 pi square C i, where C is speed of light. And what is I? Moment of inertia. And I is given by mu r naught square. So, where mu is the reduced mass 
R naught is the equilibrium distance. Okay. So, this is the necessary. So, in experiment it turns out after doing the experiment in one experiment what they have found that 1 H 35 C L the value of B naught was equal to 10.44 centimeter inverse and similarly value of 1 sorry 2 H C L 35 the value of B naught is equal to 5.39 centimeter inverse. So, you see when I substitute the hydrogen with deuterium there is a drastic change in the value of the B naught. Okay. This is what I call as isotope effect. Now, let us use this and try to evaluate what is the length or the equilibrium length of the HCl molecule or DCL molecule. Now, we know that B naught in centimeter inverse is given by H by 8 pi square C i which is also given by H by 8 pi square C mu r naught square. So, I can slightly rewrite this equation in r naught square is equal to h by 8 pi square c mu b naught. So, I am going to use this formula and plug it in and see what I will get. Now, h is nothing but 6.626 into 10 power minus 34 joule second. You can see this, you can verify phi if the formula is dimensionally correct. Okay. Now, 6.626 in 10 power minus 34 is the value of H that will be in joule second, is not it? So, it is an action constant joule second 8 pi square C is 2.997. Since I am looking at this centimeter inverse, I am looking at speed of light in centimeters per second. So, that will be 2 point into 10 power 10 centimeters per second into mu. Okay, mu I need the, uh, the reduced mass. So, if I look at 1 H 35 C L, then my reduced mass will be nothing but 35 by 36 into 1.66 into 10 power minus 27 kilograms. So, that will be nothing but 35 divided by 36 into 1.66 into 10 power minus 27 into value of B naught which is 10.44. So, I can uh, do little bit of uh, equations and change uh, I mean do algebra. So, this uh, this 34 uh, and this 27 will cancel and then you will get 10 power minus 7 and this 10 power 10 and that will this I can cancel and write and write 10 power 17. Okay. So, what I will get is that 6.626 divided by 3991.031 into 10 power minus 17. So, that is going to be the value just you can you know do the math I have already done it. So, this will be now be equal to 1.660 into 10 power minus 20. So, r naught square. So, I take a square root r naught will be now equal to 1.288 into 10 power minus 10 meters. You know 1.28 10 power minus 10 meters is nothing but your angstrom. So, this will R naught will be nothing but 1.288 angstrom. 
Similarly, for if I take the same value r naught square is equal to 6.626 into 10 power minus 34 divided by 8 pi square into 2.997 into 10 power 10. Now, instead of uh, I take 2H 35Cl, so deuterium isotope DCl. So, that will be nothing but into 70 divided by 37 because 2 into 35 is 70, 2 plus 35 is 37 into 1.66 in 10 power minus 27 into now the value of the rotational constant is 5.39 centimeter inverse. If I do the math, what I will get is R naught will be equal to 1.286 angstroms. Okay. So, what I get is the following for 1 H Cl 35 that is HCl with 35 isotope for R naught will be equal to 1.288 angstrom and 2 H Cl 35 that is DCl R naught is equal to 1.286 angstrom. Okay. So, minute changes in the isotopes do affect the lengths. Okay, it's here the change is in third decimal. Okay, so you should have that kind of uh, calibration that will allow you to differentiate the uh, bond lengths at third decimal. Okay, and mind you that the rotational spectroscopy is the only spectroscopic technique by which one can measure bond lengths. Okay, now uh, this is just an example. So let me just tell you quickly. Okay. How we can use this uh, problem to look at something else. Okay. Now, uh, the other problem that one can look at in the rotational spectroscopy is let us suppose a carbon monoxide molecule CO. Now, CO can have various isotopes. One of the uh, isotope is the standard one is 12 C O 16. Okay. The other one will be 13 C 16. The third one will be 12 C O 18. Of course, the fourth one will be 13 C O 18. There is also oxygen 17, but we will not get into that. But these are the po four possible uh, isotopes that one can uh, isotopomers. So, these are isotopomers of CO. Now, uh, I do not have data for this, so I will go to ignore. Okay. So, for 12 C O 16 and 13 C O 16 and for 12 C O 18, the B naught in hertz is given by 578.98.4 megahertz and this is 5536.3 megahertz and this is 5135.3 megahertz. Now, I can always convert megahertz or hertz into uh, centimeter inverse. So, if I convert this, this will convert to be 1.9318 centimeter inverse and this will be nothing but 1.8467 centimeter minus 1 and this will be nothing but 1.8396 centimeter inverse. Now, if you look at some, if you look at the difference, this is less than 0 0.09 centimeter inverse, and this is less than 0 0.01 centimeter. 
Now, if I have to distinguish between this and this, then my resolution of my spectrometer should be less, better than 0 0.01 centimeter units or at least half of that or this should be 0 0.09 centimeter inverse. So, if I have to distinguish the isotopomers of my carbon monoxide, the microwave spectrometer, the spectrometer that records this rotational spectra, okay, should have very high resolution. So, that I can separate out this isotopomers. By the way, oxygen 8 is in not a bubble, but carbon 13 is 1 percent natural abundance. Okay. In fact, there are spectrometers in which you can record the spectrum of this using natural abundance. Okay. Now, when I use this data and convert, okay, so I can use this data to convert. I know the values of B naught. So, these are B naught in centimeters. So, by the way, when you got in centimeter, it is also called B naught bar. Okay. So, I have this in megahertz and also in centimeter inverse, I can use the value B naught is equal to H by 8 pi square I, this is nothing but H by 8 pi square mu R square or naught square or B naught bar that is in centimeter inverse is H by 8 pi square C I or H 8 pi 8 pi square C mu R naught square. I can use one of them and plug in the values of mu. Of course, when you have these, the values of mu will keep changing. Then it turns out when you calculate all this, we will get R naught for 12 C 16 O is equal to 1.12 eight five angstroms and you will get R naught for 13 C O 16 is equal to 1.2735 angstroms and for R naught for 12 C 18 O will be 1.2 sorry 127, 1.127, 1.1285 extra. I might have done some mistake here, you can recheck. So, this is how one can use the rotational spectroscopy data to calculate the bond lengths. Okay? And one also has to calculate bond lengths of several isotopomers to get the statistically correct answer. Okay? We will stop it here. Thank you very much.